Hello, I'm David Penn, research analyst with Finnovate. We're here at Finnovate Spring 2022 in San Francisco, California. And joining me is Rupesh Chukchi. He is the Vice President, Product Strategy and Innovation with AT&T Business. Rupesh, thank you very much for being a part of us. Great, great. Thank you so much for having me. So, now you're fresh off the stage uh, from your presentation, and I'm going to get the title here, make sure I get it uh, correct. Innovating at the Network Edge, how networking innovations are enabling disruptions in fintech. I have to admit, one of the things I thought was really fascinating just when I heard that you were going to be presenting was the idea that we talk about so many things in financial technology, but one of the things we almost never talk about is the communications technology and the networks that make all of it possible. So I thought it was really great to have you and have AT&T Business part of Innovate Spring to really help lead a lot of that conversation. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. And you're right in terms of, you know, we're like the foundation layer, right? Yeah. In terms of how all of this innovation starts to kind of come together and take place and super thrilled to be here today and looking forward to our conversation. Absolutely. So let's get into it a little bit. Um, uh, for those who didn't catch your presentation, uh, as well as those who did, I'm wondering if you could maybe give us some of the maybe top two or three key takeaways you think that are the most important things for people to keep in mind when it comes to the relationship between networking and uh, disruption in fintech. I think the you know the way I'm thinking about it is that you know there's some trends that are driving the technology driven innovation right there's one around wireless connectivity ubiquitous connectivity mm -hmm. and if you look at a lot of the innovation that's happening in fintech is associated with the user experiences right and you see this sort of you know whether it is a um, an interaction on a mobile commerce kind of a platform mm -hmm. or some interaction with a call center, but utilizing conversational AI mm. or other things. Um, so connectivity plays a very important role, right? Mm. And having ubiquitous connectivity that is high scale on demand uh, is important. I think the second thing is that I see a, a shift to the cloud continue. Yes. So the cloud ecosystem is something that we're seeing ongoing. Mm -hmm. And uh, what that is doing is then giving this kind of platform or the opportunity to create new applications that are designed for a distributed edge or that are designed for utilizing this you know, ubiquitous connectivity and plugged into going back to the experiences part of it, what I was mentioning. Mm -hmm. And then all of that as, as continues to scale, we're gonna see more and more you know, pervasive computing and things that are always on, always available, always on demand. Mm -hmm. So when I walk around the floor at FinTech, I saw that a lot of the smaller, younger kind of companies are almost, you know, banking on this infrastructure, this capability, mm -hmm. this networking trend to be there right. to really differentiate the end experience and the end game for their products and services. Yeah, really interesting. I'd like to maybe follow uh, up on that a little bit in terms of some of the things you've been here at Finnovate, talking to people, probably doing some networking of your own. I'm curious, what are some of the things that you're hearing from them, uh, from the people you're talking with in terms of some of the challenges that they've got right now? So definitely, you know, uh, a lot of challenges, right? And, and you know, the opportunities, right? So uh, I think there is still a lot of siloed mm. legacy infrastructure, right? There's still a lot of companies are dealing with, you know, how do you kind of like take what you have onto a new platform, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of that journey to the cloud or the journey to the multi-cloud, you know, is mm -hmm. ways of what we call as modernization, right? So modernization of the app structures and modernization of the networking capabilities that you need mm -hmm. uh, to do that. Uh, and I feel that there is a lot of sort of opportunities to kind of do a little bit of a, a catapult or a breakthrough. Hmm. And I feel that, uh, you know, first of all, thrilled to be here in person. And I felt like the innovation engine was always working, right? So even mm -hmm. though we were all like remote, right. people were thinking, innovating, et cetera. Now they get to showcase here and be able to share and talk. Mm -hmm. So that is my whole idea that you got to accelerate catapult breakthrough because you've figured and, you know, kind of mulled over all of these things for right. such a long time. We go into the open world, execute. I think the competitive differentiation that are going to be, because if you think about financial services is, is a relatively crowded hmm. space, right? right? Lots of banking institutes, lots of insurance companies, lots of technology providers, lots of fintech providers. Mm -hmm. And how do you kind of emerge as a differentiated product portfolio? 
yeah. I think is, a, is an important aspect. Yeah, it's really something I think that sometimes uh, those of us who are involved in the industry almost uh, take for granted and don't really realize just how crowded, how many players there they are. We always think of, okay, the, you have these pe people working with these and these folks competing against these. But when you sort of pull back, you just find it's just a, a really crowded street of a lot of different players all trying mm -hmm. to do a lot of the same sorts of things and trying to innovate in a lot of the same sorts of mm -hmm. spaces. So I guess the, the next question really is where does AT&T business come in to really help some of these companies make that, if you want to call that catapult or that next jump, if arguably, uh, making it through the COVID experience, the lockdown experience, uh, cause a whole lot of, of innovations and things, digitization there. What is it that takes us to the next level? How does AT&T Business help those companies move to that next post, hopefully we can say, a post-pandemic stage? That's a great question. And uh, the way you know, we're thinking about it is that, look, you know, we've all talked about the digital acceleration that right. took place, right? So 10 years worth of stuff happened in two years, right? Mm -hmm. We're grappling with this whole sort of, you know, hybrid work environments, right? The other day I was talking with somebody about just sort of, you know, the amount of kind of robotics that we're going to see. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the physical robotics, it's, it's all these sort of, you know, software robots, right, mm -hmm. that are coming into play. Mm -hmm. So in order to make all of that a reality, the way we are thinking about it is that the investments we're going to make or are making or continue to make uh, in our fiber footprint, in our 5G capabilities, mm -hmm. is going to provide that sort of, you know, baseline connectivity. Mm -hmm. And from there, we're thinking about enablers, right? And you walk around the floor, you hear about some APIs and mm -hmm. other things. So we're making our networks more sort of, you know, programmable and mm -hmm. open up okay. those APIs that then can be consumed by the application layer to make the end user experience very much you know, differentiated. So mm -hmm. if I think about it, it's a layered cake for us. It's the core connectivity, the infrastructure, put the enablers at the top of it, to then going into some deeper partnerships into the ecosystem, startups, large tech, you know, hyperscalers, integrators, and then going into sort of you know, the true end customers and the verticals that we support. So, you know, 5G is a big space, a lot of innovation yeah. opportunity over there. 5G with Edge, it's going to continue to be explosive. It's going to be massive. Uh, and uh, look, you know, we are thinking ahead just like everybody else. Sure. And uh, the, the innovation engine is ripe. Mm. I think it's going to continue. And we're here to help the innovators innovate, right? So our jobs are to create the platforms, the technology, the enablers, mm -hmm. and deliver on this best wireless network or a ubiquitous networking capability. So you're not worried about, or you're not thinking about, is it all going to go through or not going to go through? Is there bandwidth available or not available? Mm -hmm. Is my experience going to be hampered by, you know, some kind of choke points in the networks, et cetera, right? So on demand, intelligent, at scale, right. that is what we're putting forward. Yeah, it's really, really interesting stuff. I, I almost get the, you're talking about the idea of a lot of these companies that are sort of, in a sense, leveraging a lot of their innovations on the things that they know or believe are going to be possibly made possible from networks like AT&T's. I almost think of a, of, a, of, a, of a group of people outside of of a club and they're all ready and they're all dressed up and they're all ready to go and have a great time and they're assuming that there's going to be the band's going to be in there and the band's going to be ready to go right. and the food and the drinks everything's going to be ready yes. to go and they don't really think about what's going to happen only they know that once they get in that door it's going to be great because it's got to be great. It's got to be great. Um, yes. Sort of in that in that, that that vein, I wonder for yourself. You talked about enablers. You talked about you know five G, which people have been looking forward to for so long. What are some of the things that maybe a lot of folks on our side don't really know about in terms of connectivity? That are things that you're thinking about and are really exciting you maybe a year or two down the line. So if we look ahead, right? Uh, you know, as I mentioned, so one is just sort of the the build out of the network, right? Mm -hmm. And the scale at which that network is going to operate, the speeds that it's going to deliver. Right. You know, we are investing in edge capabilities to really enable a distributed architecture for applications. Mm -hmm. And those applications are going to consume the low latency advantage, the high speed, et cetera. On the other end, if you think about one of the big roles that we're playing and will continue to play is we're providing kind of, you know, inherent security, mm -hmm. right? So 5G is more secure as right. an example. Lots of mobile commerce taking place, right? And for a lot of fintech companies or financial services, the security and the privacy and the type of transaction, the encryption of the data, mm. et cetera, is very, very important. Yeah. So what we're doing is continue to invest and innovate in that space to make it more and more easier 
for these sort of you know developers for the application community mm -hmm. to make sure that it's not only a network that's going to have a slicing capability but it's also a network that can do private routing more secure routing mm. and deliver again going back to the whole sort of you know the speed at which the transaction needs to take place right so whether you are a you know a, a investment uh, banker or whether you are a you know mobile processor or whether you're doing peer to peer payments or mm -hmm. whether you're doing large scale data application because you need to provide or maintain all of these records right. because it's a highly regulated industry right whatever the use case might be as we look ahead the investments in 5G and fiber in the edge capabilities in these enablers mm. is all sort of you know powering that uh, opportunity. Yeah, very, very interesting stuff. Again, it's really been fantastic to have you uh, here as a part of AT&T Business to really, again, talk about some of this stuff that I think a lot of folks, I don't want to say take for granted, but really just sort of count on and they don't even maybe realize how much they're counting on it. And I think it's really great, again, to have AT&T Business here to talk a little bit about that and to really start to close that circle so that folks can start to know and appreciate and, again, participate in that conversation. Again, I think that's going to be so much important in terms of driving the innovations that we all know are just right around the corner. Absolutely. And the one message I'll kind of leave behind is that, look, you know, historically, the application providers or the application writers or the developers never thought about sort of, you know, the plumbing, right? Exactly. And they would always think about, okay, you know, I got to go do certain form function kind of capability. Mm -hmm. I think they are now realizing that they have to take care of two things into account. One is the security aspects, yes. right? So it's got to be secure from design perspective. And second is really harness and tap into the power of the networks, mm -hmm. right? So you kind of create distributed, differentiated application experiences utilizing the power of the network. And that's what, you know, I'm, I'm super excited to see in the conversations we had, mm -hmm. you know, here at FinTech. So again, thank you so much uh, for having me. You know, it's been a very fascinating conversation. And again, wonderful to have at and Business as a part of Finnovate Spring this year. Great, thank you so much. Thank really you. appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. And thank you for joining thank you. Me.